Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Tote Bag Podcast. I'm your host, Biba, and I'm super excited to have you here for today's episode. I know it has been a long time since I posted, and truthfully, I don't really have an explanation other than the fact that life just got busy with final season, and I don't know, things just got a little chaotic, and I think I needed to step back from the podcast for a little bit, but I'm back and I'm really excited for... The content that is coming in the next few months, I have a really exciting lineup planned of people who I think will have some really insightful things to share with all of you. So look forward to that because I really am looking forward to it. Um, in terms of today's episode, it's going to be a little different. I recorded this right before Thanksgiving break with Miss Guncher, who I'm sure a lot of you know the teacher here at East and I think a lot of people especially know her from her ethnic studies class which was a big part of what I talked to her about. She is my senior paper interviewee and we were just able to have a very raw discussion about the importance of diversified narratives in classrooms, in media, in political offices and it was by far one of the most insightful conversations I've had so far for this podcast. And that's not at all to invalidate the stuff that's been put on the podcast so far or the things that I've recorded because I've thoroughly enjoyed all of those and the people that have been on. But I think this conversation was so eye-opening to be able to just sit down and talk about some things that I think we often shy away from because they're uncomfortable to talk about and they're not easy to discuss. Um, I'm really excited to share this with all of you because it was basically just a conversation between me and Miss Guncher about the impact her classes have on a broader scale with students here at East. And I just wanted to give a little bit of background so that you knew kind of what was coming in the podcast rather than just throwing the podcast directly because I didn't do a welcome to the tote bag podcast intro when I actually recorded it. But I think that is enough rambling from me. Without further ado, I present to you my senior paper interview with Miss Guncher about the importance of representation in the media. I lied. I have one more thing to say before we get into this. A big part of starting this podcast was to allow other people to have a platform to share the things that they're passionate about and their stories which really ties into the whole idea of the importance of diversified narratives so going forward i'm really excited to have different kinds of people on with different passions and different backgrounds because i think that really is what makes storytelling so special is that we can understand life from various points of view so yeah getting into the interview now i hope you enjoy and just start by introducing yourself, like your name and what you teach here at East. Okay. I'm Cassie Guncher, and I'm in the Social Studies Department. I teach U.S. History, Ethnic Studies, Indiana Studies, and Econ. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now that we've done the little introduction, thank you so much for doing this for me. And um, so the main reason that I wanted to have you on today, because we're talking about representation in the media, is because within the last few years, you have started these new classes at East with Ethnic Studies and Indiana Studies. So I was wondering if you could preface a little bit about what made you start them and what those classes are about. Sure. So um, Ethnic Studies and Indiana Studies were actually created like by the state um, probably like five or six years ago and they're required to be offered by um, schools but because nobody had really taken them on there wasn't a lot of promotion for them so as electives nobody not enough people were signing up for them to be Mm -hmm. taught Mm -hmm. Um, and so um, I ended up talking to Mr. Lewis about really wanting to take on, especially ethnic studies, because I was passionate about it. Um, And so um, I started teaching it in the fall of 2020. And um, I went around to classes the year before to promote it and let students know what it was all about so that I was able to get um, enough students to actually teach three classes worth of it last Mm -hmm. year. And then I also have three classes worth of it this year. So that's really good. Um, Students are really excited to learn about those diverse perspectives. It's always something that I cared a lot about, but didn't feel like I was doing a good enough job of highlighting in just my regular US history classes. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a good place to really dive deeper into some of those topics in ethnic studies. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And what do you feel like you found to be the most significant differences between the regular social studies classes you teach and ethnic studies? 
So the big thing with the regular U.S. history classes, a lot of times it's just building off of things that students have been learning um, really since elementary school. And so, of course, they're going to get more knowledge about things, but they've kind of heard the same stories over and over again. Um, For instance, about like Christopher Columbus and like each year as they get older, they learn more details and maybe learn some of the more controversial topics. But ethnic studies gives us a chance to try to look at those big stories um, from different perspectives. Um, how other people that were living during that time period might have felt about those um, events happening. But then also ethnic studies, um, we really dive into topics that I sometimes feel like I don't have time to get into in the regular U.S. history class where I'm supposed to cover from like revolutionary war all the way up to modern times. So um, like we'll talk about a topic like Um, Native American boarding schools that I might be able to take two or three minutes to talk about in U.S. history and instead we can spend a whole lesson really learning about details with it. Mm -hmm. Definitely and specifically as an educator what do you feel like is the most like impactful being able to take a class like that where you learn social studies from different perspectives like you were saying? Um, I think that the younger generation just in general feels a lot more inclusive than generations before, like even my own generation. And Mm -hmm. um, I think that students and young people are like hungry to learn some of those details and some of that knowledge that they feel like is not being taught to them. Um, And so I really like the chance to kind of feed that passion that students might have. And also knowing that the world is only getting more diverse and and the workplaces and environments we're in are only getting more and more diverse which of course is a good thing Mm -hmm. but we're not preparing our students for that if we don't give them those multiple perspectives while they're young so that they're prepared for that the way the world is because columbus east and columbus in general are not super diverse places Mm -hmm. and so we need to make sure that we're exposing young people to that diversity Mm -hmm, definitely and this is just out of my own curiosity but do you see like later down the line the idea of what is involved in ethnic studies and social studies classes kind of becoming one or do you think they'll always sort of have a separation so that has been one of my goals as a teacher especially now that I have really spent so much time like reteaching myself some of this history and and broadening Mm -hmm. my own understanding um it's been a goal for myself to make my just regular U.S. history classes more inclusive and more diverse and including some of those diverse perspectives. And so over time, I would hope that they kind of almost meld together and that I'm able to bring more ethnic studies topics into U.S. history. Um, But I don't, I think that ethnic studies is special just because of the fact that it's an it's an elective and so students who are in there really want to know the information and they are ready to discuss and challenge themselves and challenge others um so it has definitely influenced my teaching but i definitely think there is value in having them be separated as well Mm -hmm, definitely so a lot of so specifically within your ethnic studies class a lot of it discusses representation in different ways whether that's through minority groups or discussing issues that are actively happening in the world so I think my question is to you, what is the most important part of representation that you've found from teaching? So I think that it is twofold um, because um, there's a topic I bring up in classes that's called mirrors and windows. So Mm -hmm. the idea of mirrors is that you can see yourself and your experiences reflected in the different topics that come up in a class and windows is that you can see into someone else's perspective and their experiences. And so depending on the point of view you're coming from, if you're a white student, you often get those mirrors in your classes, like pretty constantly and pretty consistently. And so that means that you're missing out on learning about all of the window opportunities of different experiences. Um, And so opening up mindsets of white students is super important. But then also for those students of color who have, again, kind of we've done them a disservice by not including um, 
materials and resources that represent them and their culture and their lives and experiences. And so, you know, then they may struggle with having um, like a high self-esteem or things like that. And so being able to give them that value of like, you're important and here are examples of books and leaders from your background and from your culture that you can look up to um, and you're just as an important part of our American story as anybody else. Mm -hmm, Definitely. And I think, I think something that people often kind of say about it is that they're, we're already making progress in terms of representation, not only in classrooms, but in media. But um, in your opinion, do you feel like, like at where we are now, do you feel like there's still progress to be made in terms of making sure students feel represented in classrooms and on screen? So I definitely understand and agree with the fact that we are making progress and we have. I mean, even when I think back to the past five years, um, you know, looking at movies, movies like Black Panther or even like Wonder Woman having a woman as a superhero instead of just a guy all the time. So definitely there has been a big increase in representation. Um, But of course, there's always room for improvement. Um, And I think one of the things that we have to be careful of is saying, okay, like we've done this for a few years, we've corrected the problem, and then we can just go back to normal because unfortunately normal wasn't being representative of Mm -hmm. people. And so um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg talked about the idea that like it would be like throwing out an umbrella in a rainstorm because you're not getting wet. So like we can't just say, oh, we fixed the problem because then if we go back to the way things were, then it's gonna cause the problems again. So Mm -hmm. I think that it's been a long-term problem of misrepresentation in media and that we can't just expect it to be fixed within a few short years. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we're aware of it now is hopefully only going to lead to more and more progress. Yeah, definitely. And I know you mentioned Black Panther and something that I remember from your class last year is that you incorporate a lot of pop culture in your lessons to kind of be able to relate what we're talking about, the issues to like real world problems where people can make that connection. Do you feel like that's impactful for people to be able to have something to relate to when you're talking about whatever issue is at hand? I definitely think so, and I think it also, using pop culture is a good way to introduce difficult discussions. Um, you know, Black Panther, of course, it's it's a movie, and it's a comic book, and whatever, but also there are so many, like, deeper themes within that movie, mm-hmm. and the same thing exists in, you know, books that we read, or poetry, and other shows and movies, just because it's not always a serious Um, drama or like a documentary doesn't mean we can't get messages out of that media and use it um, to make connections to ourselves and others. Mm -hmm, Definitely and I think another thing that I really enjoyed about your class is that you make an active effort to work on breaking down stereotypes and so I'm just wondering to you what do you think is the most harmful impact of stereotypes in media or in literature, whatever that may be, especially to the communities of people that are reading it about their own culture? So one big topic we discuss in ethnic studies is the idea of bias and especially implicit bias. So these are ideas that you have without even really knowing or understanding that you have them. So like, for example, if I were to say peanut butter, most people would just automatically say jelly. It's just like that association that we make. And so um, when media um, is pretty constantly giving us um, that same stereotype or that same um, harmful version of representation, um, I think we absorb that connection in our brains without realizing that we're doing it. So um, one example would be like, if you hear the word criminal or crime, often our brains immediately make that connection to like a young black male. And of course, that is not the only uh, definition or an accurate definition of what a criminal is, but because we're often hit with that story from the media, or if you see a story of a crime, it's uh, accompanied by that mugshot of a young black male, um, it kind of leads to these stereotypes. And again, we kind of talked about this. That's not only hurting uh, 
you know, those of us who are developing the stereotypes about others. But then um, if a young black male also is absorbing those messages, then he's kind of being told, oh, you are a criminal and that's how everybody sees you. Mm -hmm. And it makes it hard to, you know, reach those higher levels of of achievement if you think that everybody's against you from the Mm get-go. No, I definitely think that's a good point. And I know you touched on this a little bit earlier about kind of the positives of people feeling seen in the media, but um, in in terms of like feeling represented in every aspect, whether that's on screen, in class, in political offices, what do you think is like the biggest takeaway for someone who can look somewhere and see themselves present? Like, what do you think the biggest impact for them is? I think that just the idea of of we shouldn't be limiting ourselves or others of what you can accomplish. So, um, you know, Barack Obama being elected president was a huge deal because up until that point, it had been all white men. And so having just that, you know, the the person that's breaking that barrier um, just opens up the goals and mindsets of lots of different people. Um, And so I think that is an important piece that students and people of color don't feel limited by the stereotypes of, oh, a president is a white male or um, a doctor is a white male. Understanding that there are figures that have, you know, been in those roles for throughout history. And maybe we've never heard so much about uh, women serving as chiefs of Native American tribes, or we haven't heard about you know, the black man who helped invent the first heart transplant, but like that those people exist and did exist and we shouldn't limit our dreams because we only see one version of that in the world today. Mm -hmm, Definitely. And this, this is a question that I just thought of. I think it'd be interesting to hear what you have to say about it. You mentioned that you wanted to take on ethnic studies because you're really passionate about it. And going forward with the students that you have in your class, what would you say is the main thing that you want them to take away from what you teach? I think um, there's a couple things. First is just um, being comfortable with your own identity and proud of it and and recognizing like your own strengths. But then also this idea that just because we're all different and diverse um, doesn't mean that we also don't have things in common. And so um, it's important that we recognize the value that comes from our differences and don't always see that as a barrier, but something that if you have a more diverse group of people around you, um, it just helps open your eyes to different perspectives and really helps us all um, achieve more in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, So those are some things that I think are super important with ethnic studies is like um, feeling good about yourself, but also just feeling more comfortable in the world and being able to have positive relationships with people who are different from you Mm -hmm. no definitely I think that's awesome and to kind of wrap this up I want to hear like what are your thoughts on some small steps that we can take collectively as a society to promote like not only media but again classroom inclusivity just make people feel more seen and heard moving forward with future generations Um, I mentioned this earlier but the process for me it all started with like becoming educated myself. So, um, you know, I grew up in a school system, even through college, where I was pretty much getting just one perspective on history. Mm -hmm. And so it's taken a lot of commitment for me to be able to read books from different uh, perspectives, or even something as simple as social media, following people Mm -hmm. um, who are sharing news from diverse perspectives, rather than just what you're always seeing over and over. Um, And so I think that commitment to educate ourselves is super important. Um, But then also once you, nobody's ever going to be 100% comfortable talking about tough issues like race and diversity um, because it is just a controversial topic. Um, So I try to encourage my students like, I, I want you to kind of push outside of your comfort zones and realize that as we're talking about some of this messy stuff, you may mess up and uh, you can know better and do better in the future. So like understanding that it's a process and that even though I'm teaching the topic that I'm not gonna be perfect when I talk about it Mm -hmm. and that we need to like give each other some grace and some leeway that we're all 
attempting to do our best and we can help each other do better along the way. So Mm -hmm. educating ourselves, but then also kind of building each other up as we all kind of work towards this more inclusive future. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you so much, Ms. Gunter. I really appreciate you doing this. I loved being on here. Thank you. (laughs)